Good morning, Love of Christ. Hi, my name is Caleb Kunze, uh, the Director of Youth Ministry here at Love of Christ. I'm really excited to share some insight into Scripture this morning. Uh, I can't wait as we dive in in this series of Hope for the World. Uh, we're, we're at the conclusion, we're at the end here of this sermon series, and it's crazy how quickly a sermon series can kind of come and go. And, and I wanted to take a pause, because I think so often we as people, were like in sermon series, and then we're out, and then we're on to the next one. We're like, hey, that was really good. And we kind of forget about it and we keep pushing on. Hey, what's the next series? This morning, though, I want to take a quick pause and to say this, is, this series about hope for the world isn't one that we just hit on and then we're done. This idea of hope for the world because of Jesus is something that we're supposed to live out every single day of our life, not just on a Sunday morning, not just during the sermon series about hope for the world, but every single day we are called to, to live out a, a life full of hope uh, and of confidence in Jesus. Uh, so think about that this morning. How can you, as we move on past this sermon series into our next one, how can you still continue to live in, in hope of Jesus and rest in his hope? Uh, so I wanted to kind of challenge you with that. Uh, to quick recap of this whole sermon series as we're here at the close of it, uh, last week Pastor Steve talked about the hope of mothers and how we as humans find, as Christians, we find our identity not in being just a mom or not just a dad or a son or a daughter or aunt or uncle, as a carpenter or as a grocery store clerk or whatever it might be, as a, a soccer player or football player or an artist, but our identity is found in Jesus. Jesus has said, you are my sons and daughters, and that's the true identity that we need to remember. That is our true identity. Uh, and then two weeks ago, Pastor Bob and Carol talked about hope and finances. And during this time, there's a lot of difficulty in so many people's finances, and yet God still provides. That doesn't mean that, the, that we're gonna not face any troubles or difficulties, but we can still have hope in our finances because we know that Jesus is with us us and he provides. And then three weeks ago, I was able to kick off this sermon series uh, with the idea of we look back to see the future. We look back and that we can have hope for the future and we look back and see what Jesus has done on our behalf with his death and resurrection uh, that gives us hope as we push forward. Uh, so this morning, we're going to be diving in. Uh, but before we do, if you, if you don't mind bowing your heads and praying with me, that would be awesome. Uh, dear Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thanks for all those listening in right now, God. Uh, it's so strange to, to be talking to a camera, um, but knowing that there's people on the other side that are listening to this, Lord. I pray that you work in their hearts and in their their minds, Lord, uh, that you open up um, just the, the willingness to listen, the willingness to hear, Lord, your word, your truth being spoken. And God, I pray that you remove me from this message, uh, that you remove Caleb, the youth dude, uh, from this message and let it be your word spe speaking through me, God. I pray that you use me as a vessel uh, to portray your truth and your word to, to your people, God. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So as we dive in, if you haven't already, I encourage you to, to grab a Bible. Um, so go grab a Bible because we're going to be camping out in a lot of different places here this morning. We're going to be hitting on a lot of really amazing Bible verses uh, that if you are someone who likes to highlight or underline in your Bibles, um, this is a, a great sermon, I think, to, to really do that because uh, we're going to be hitting a lot of great things. So go grab your Bible. Uh, I'm trying to talk about that long enough that you have enough time to go grab your Bibles if you haven't already. Uh, but as you're doing that, here, here we go. Uh, picture this. May 25th, 1977. It was a Wednesday, and on this day, if you're unfamiliar, uh, this day brings a lot of joy. Uh, this day will live in infamy of one of the great days in our history, uh, in the world history. Uh, on this day, the birth of something great happened. On May 25th, 1977, only eight days away until we celebrate the 43rd celebration of this amazing day. Something magnificent, something truly grand and spectacular happened. And if you're like, ah, man, I, I should maybe know this. It sounds like a really big deal. Yeah, you probably should know, uh, but let me help you out in case you didn't. On this day, May 25th, 1977, a, a, an epic, legendary thing was born. And that, folks, is the day that Star Wars, A New Hope, was released. 
<laughs> Star Wars A New Hope was released. This day is one of the great days because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And you're probably thinking, ah. How did I not see this coming? Or probably some of you might be thinking, yeah, I was there. I was at the theater. Some of you are lucky enough to be able to go and watch the first Star Wars movie in theaters that day. Uh, and you're probably like, why are, why are we talking? Why, why, Caleb? Why are you talking about Star Wars again? Star Wars, a new hope. And that, brothers and sisters in Christ, is our launch pad for this sermon this morning, a new hope. What is the new hope that you and I have in Jesus? And that's what we're going to be diving into. But a little background as to that Star Wars movie. Uh, a new hope, one of the, the kind of classic quotable lines is, is Princess Leia says, Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope, or you're our only hope. And this idea of having hope. You see, they're based in a time where the galactic empire is ruling, the rebellion is being squished, they really have no hope for their futures, and at the beginning of the movie, we see that they had just stolen the plans to, to, to defeat the Death Star. The Death Star could blow up an entire planet with one shot, and they finally had a glimmer of hope because they had the plans on how to defeat the empire, how they could defeat the Death Star. And there was a new, a new hero that was going to be coming into the picture, Luke Skywalker, a Jedi Knight. And this idea of hope is amazing. This idea of having a glimpse of hope as to the future is where, where we're jumping in today. We can have hope for the future. There is hope for the world. We as Christians have a new hope. We look back and we see what Jesus has done and we get to look forward to the future with this new hope. And you might be thinking, what do you, what do you mean, this new hope? Well, we're gonna dive in. But before we get there, um, I, if you haven't grabbed your Bibles, again, grab your Bible. I wanna do a quick little um, 30,000 foot view of the story of the Bible. The 30, not even 30,000 feet, probably like 130,000 feet view of scripture and the story, okay? Uh, just to kind of get us into where we're at here this morning. So we see that back in the beginning in Genesis, uh, we kind of see the creation of the world, right? We see creation, we see uh, the fall into sin, and then we see the promise of the Savior, the first promise uh, back in Genesis 3. And then, to be honest, most of the rest of the Old Testament is the story of God uh, working through his chosen people, Israel. God working in different, unique ways, and, and some of the, the key figures and key stories uh, that we see is all about God working through his people, Israel, bringing about that promise. Uh, and in the Old Testament, we see books of the law, so some of the books that Moses had written about a lot of different laws. We see uh, history and the history of the kings and the history of the different, the different stuff that was going on in Israel's past. Uh, we see books of poetry. We see some of the major and minor prophets that were going on and a little glimpse into them as God was speaking through these specific people to bring his word to God's chosen people, Israel. And then fast forward 400 years, we come to this point at the end of the Old Testament called kind of the silent years. So in between the Old and the New Testament, there was 400 years of silence that God didn't speak through a prophet. And they're known as kind of the silent years. It doesn't mean that God wasn't active and that God wasn't moving. He just was silent and not speaking through a prophet. And then we get to the New Testament and we have the four Gospels, right? We have Jesus fulfilling the promise of back in Genesis. Jesus fulfilling the promise to save his people, to save all people who are, who are called according to his name. We see Jesus. And then in Acts, we see some church history. And then we see the letters of Paul and other writers to different churches and to different people. And then we close the Bible. We end, kind of the Bible ends with the book of Revelation, a book of prophecy. And, and we see the promise that Jesus is going to be coming back again. So you see, the Bible is kind of bookended with this idea of hope. Back in Genesis, it was hope that Jesus was going to be coming and fulfilling the prophecy that the Savior was going to come into the world, and he did that. And then the Bible ends in Revelations, uh, in Revelation 22, verse 20. 
Literally the second to last verse in all of Scripture says this. If you want to open up your Bibles to Revelation 22, verse 20, uh, it says this. He who testifies to these things says, and this is Jesus, yes, I am coming soon. And then it says, amen, come Lord Jesus. Uh, Yes, I am coming soon. You see, the Bible ends with this, this hope for the future that Jesus, our Savior, is coming back. Jesus is going to be coming back to this earth once again. How exciting is that? How much hope and anticipation and confidence do we have knowing that our risen Savior is coming back? And he's not coming back again humbly as a little bitty baby, but he's going to be coming back full of power and full of glory. And that is something that is good news, that is hope for the world that we get to be excited about. And we already know that Jesus keeps his promises. So you can bet your bottom dollar that he is coming back. He says, I am coming back. Yes, I am coming soon. We get to look forward with anticipation and excitement. We don't know when. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, it says this, but about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. He might come back by the end of this sermon. Uh, He might come back in 600 years from now. We don't know when. But we know and we can have confidence that he's promised. He's coming. And we can have that confidence knowing that he is coming back again someday. And you might be thinking or asking yourself, well, why is he coming? Why is Jesus coming back a second time? Uh, He already came back once, or he already came once to to die on a cross to save us from our sin, right? But, But why is he coming again? There's a really amazing verse in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. If you're following along and you're trying to keep up with Bible verses, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, it says this. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. So he already came once. He, He was sacrificed on our behalf. And then it says this, and he will appear a second time not to bear sin, so not to, not to be born to die on a cross again. No, he already did that. He, we're, we're covered. He already did that. He did that perf- to, to perfection. And we don't need to have him do that again in order to save us. He's already done that. So not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. You see, Jesus is coming back to bring salvation for those who are waiting for him. For you and for me, Jesus is coming back to to bring salvation, to, to bring us home to heaven so that we can live in heaven for eternity with him, to be in the presence of our Savior, to be in the presence of our Creator for an eternity. Jesus is coming back. And maybe you're just logging in now, and maybe, maybe you don't know the story of Jesus. Maybe you don't know the, the gospel message of Jesus, and you're like, Caleb, I'm a little bit lost here. I'm confused. What, what, are, you, what are you getting at? Jesus, this Jesus guy, who is he first off? And he already came once, but he's coming back again? Like, I, I'm a little bit lost. Well, let me, let me catch you up to speed here. So Jesus, God's one and only son, God himself, was born as a little bitty baby. He was born to a virgin named Mary. And Jesus lived a perfect life. He was without sin. Jesus never messed up. He never screwed up. He was perfect. And Jesus lived a perfect life. And then he, he chose to die on a cross for you. You see, Jesus was willing to substitute himself into your place, into my place that we deserved. The debt that we owed, we deserved to die. But Jesus out of love for you and for me. He took his place on a cross. He took our place and he took our sin upon his shoulders and he died. You see, Jesus was killed on our behalf and he was dead for three days. He was in a tomb and then on the third day, Jesus came bursting forth. He defeated sin, death, hell, and the devil and he conquered the grave. Jesus conquered death so that you and I can also live. There's a song right now that says, if he walked out of that grave, I'm walking too. Because Jesus has defeated sin, death, and the devil, we also can beat sin, death, and the devil. We also will live again. We also, once if we face death, we will, we will see life. 
You see, no man is truly mortal. We will live forever and forever in eternity. We will either live for have, forever in eternity with our Savior in heaven, or we will be forever eternally separated from him. We will live for forever. That gives us hope for our future. And you might be thinking, Caleb, you need to snap back to reality, brother. You need to, you need to kind of wake up and smell the roses. Do you, do you realize, Caleb, that right now here in 2020, what is going on in our world? Caleb, you need to, to, to come to your senses a little bit. You know, right now here in 2020, Caleb, we are, we are facing something. There's, there's pain in this world, Caleb. Caleb, there is, there is war going on. There is famine. There's starvation. There is abortion going on in our world today, Caleb. There's plummeting economy. There's cancer. There's corruption. There's divorce. Caleb, there's heartbreak. There's broken bones happening. There are loss of jobs, loss of loved ones. There's death. There's suffering, persecution. Caleb, there's financial stress. There's anxiety, fear, doubt. Caleb, there's depression, and mental illness in this world. Caleb, how is there hope for our futures? Snap back to reality, Caleb. We have people in, in our church right now, I know we have some seniors that are graduating that are saying, Caleb, my senior year was ripped away from me. How can I have hope for my future? We have people that have businesses in our congregation that are struggling to, to to keep their doors open with this financial economy that's going on. And they're saying, Caleb, how can, how can I have hope in this time? There are people who have lost jobs and are struggling to put food on the table for their families. Caleb, how can I have hope in a time like this? There are people that are, that are going through something that, Caleb, there's loved ones that I have that are, that are dying, that are suffering. And Caleb, for crying out loud, I can't even go and see them right now. How can I have hope for my future in a time like this? There is no future. There is no hope for my future. And Caleb, if you haven't realized, I forgot to mention, there's a worldwide pandemic that's happening that is putting our entire future into question how can I have hope in a time like this? How is there hope for the world, Caleb? And brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm right there with you. I know there, there's hardship, there's pain, there's suffering. So when I say this, I'm speaking mostly to myself. My dad says, Caleb, if, if, a, if a message or a sermon doesn't make sense to you, how is it gonna make sense to your, to your listeners? It has to make sense. So this is speaking to Caleb's heart just as much as, if not more, than speaking to your heart. Yeah, there's a lot of pain. There's suffering. But I, I believe, folks, that in moments like this is when you and I can have the most hope. I believe that in moments like this, we need to stop and say, no, that, that is a false thought that there is no hope for my future. How, how far from the truth is this idea that I can't have hope for my future? Uh, how far and how backwards of a thinking is this that I don't think and I can't have that hope for my future? How wrong this is to think. Because in moments like these, I believe we can have the most hope. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and, set, 9 and 10 says this. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, once we get to the bottom, once we get to the end of our rope where we have no more hope for the future, once we get to the bottom of the barrel and say, I can't go any lower than this, there is no hope for my future. In those moments is when Jesus says, I'm going to carry you. In those moments is when Jesus comes along to our rescue and he says, I'm going to be here with you. In those moments when we get to, to realize that I can't do it on my own, I can't keep pushing on my own, I just can't. Those are the moments when we need to rest in Jesus. 
Those are the moments where we need to rest in his love and rest in the hope that we truly do have in our Savior. Those are the moments when we can have the most hope because we know that it is only because of Jesus that we have a chance at a future. It is only because of Jesus that we can have true hope and confidence in our futures. In our reading this morning from Titus, Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says this, A faith and knowledge resting on the hope of eternal life. A faith and knowledge resting on the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. See, you and I in the most difficult of moments with a worldwide pandemic, with a lot of pain, suffering, persecutions, death, and just bad things going on in this world, this is where you and I need to rest on the hope that we have in God. This is where you and I need to rest in our Savior's arms and to say, God, I trust in you. Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I'm, I'm resting on your promises that you are never going to leave me nor forsake me. Jesus, I'm going to rest in your promises knowing that you are my rock, my fortress, and my salvation. Jesus, you are my refuge. I'm going to rest on you, Jesus. And you see, this is, this is why Paul, this is why Paul can say in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, another absolutely gold nugget of scripture. Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. And here's the thing. That doesn't mean you're not going to experience hardship. That doesn't mean that you're not going to experience pain or loss. That doesn't mean that you might not face death. But what that means is saying that those who love the Lord are going to spend an eternity in heaven with their creator. Those who put their faith, those who put their trust, their hope in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will see an eternity, will spend an eternity in the presence of their creator and their Savior. And that is good. That is what he's talking about of saying, and all things work for good. Maybe not on, on this side of heaven, but what are a mere 15, 20, 50, 100, 110 years on this planet compared to an eternity in the presence of our Savior? All things work for the good of those who love him because we will spend an eternity with our Savior in heaven. Jesus is coming back soon. You and I are called to rest in this hope, to rest and to know that Jesus always keeps his promises. And in the end of the Bible, in, the, in Revelations, he says, yeah, I'm coming soon. And we don't know when that could be in, that could be here in a couple minutes. That could be 600 years from now, but we get a rest. We get to have hope for our future because our Savior is coming back to bring us home with him. And if we should die before he comes back, we'll be in heaven. We'll be waiting. We'll be celebrating. We'll be feasting together with the lamb who takes away the sin of the entire world with our Savior. We can have confidence. And yeah, there's difficulties, there's pain, but that doesn't mean that we can't have hope for our futures. And this is hope that we need to hold on to, not just here today, not just now that the, the sermon series is over, but we need to walk this out every single day. We need to continue to hope, to continue to trust in our Savior. My final word of encouragement for you comes from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And it says this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but also all who have longed for his appearing. My encouragement for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, is in the difficult moments, in the tough times that we're facing right now, and in the tough times that are to come. My encouragement for you is to fight the fight, 
to run the race, to keep the faith, to continue to put your hope, to continue to put your trust in Jesus. And not just a wishful thinking hope, but of certainty, of confidence, and of assurance that Jesus is going to be with you. We can have hope for our future. So brothers and sisters, run the race. Keep the faith. Continue to hope in Jesus. Always keep your eyes on the King, the author and perfecter of our faith, on Jesus Christ. And rest in the hope, in the confidence that Jesus is coming soon. He is coming soon to bring salvation for all of us who are waiting for him. And in this time of such desperate need, in this time of such helplessness and hopelessness, this truly is hope for the world. This truly is hope that we can have, that we do have, that we can share with those around us, that Jesus is coming soon. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We can't wait to be in heaven for an eternity, celebrating, feasting. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this truly is hope for the world. Run the race. Keep your eyes on the king. Will you pray with me, please? Dear Jesus, we know you're coming back. We know that you're coming back a second time for the salvation of all of us who are waiting, Jesus. For those of you who don't, uh, for those of us, for those who don't know you, Jesus, I pray that you work in their hearts. I pray that you, you we, we plant the seeds, Lord. You want us to, to go and spread your good news with those around us. Help us to plant those seeds with those around us who don't yet know you, Jesus. And I pray that you water those seeds, Lord, and you make those seeds to grow, God. Give the gift of faith, the gift of your love to those who still need to hear it. Jesus, help us to trust in you. Help us to put our hope in you, knowing that you are coming again, Jesus. Help us to look forward with hope, with anticipation and excitement, knowing that it's not just wishful thinking, but it is of confidence. We know for certain that you are coming back, Jesus. Thank you for coming 2,000 years ago already for, for dying on the cross and saving us, Jesus. Help us to run the race. Help us to fight the fight. Help us to keep the faith and to rest in your arms, to rest in the, the knowledge, Jesus, that you love us and that you have saved us. For this truly is hope for the world, Jesus. Help us to have that hope for our futures. In Jesus' name, amen. Unreserved, unrestrained, your love is wild. Your love is wild for me, it isn't shy, it's unashamed. Your love is proud to be seen with me, to be seen with me. You don't give your heart in pieces. You don't hide yourself to.